to celebrate the Philharmonia's 70th anniversary year. I'm with the orchestra's honorary conductor for life, uh, Christoph von Dochnanyi. Uh, Christoph, by my calculation then, your relationship with the orchestra goes back at least uh, two of the Philharmonia's uh, seven decades. What was your first encounter with the Philharmonia? Yeah, now this is a question. Actually, the first encounter was when I met Klemperer. <laughs> I met Klemperer and he actually did record Flying Dutchman. And I visited him and that was a great, great impression. That was the first uh, really meeting Philharmonia as an orchestra professionally. So that would be the 60s then? Would it? Would yeah. It, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So th that immersion in the orchestra, hearing it at least, the, the Flying Dutchman mm -hmm. recordings with Klemperer, but your own experience, you know... That on, started on the later. Obviously I conducted Philharmonia in 73. You know, I'm told, <laughs> because it's a long, long, long time ago. But um, professionally, as a um, as their kind of a chief conductor, I was um, appointed, I think, in nine, in the 90s, 94, or something like that. But th that began with with Richard Strauss, the, the Frau und Schatten. Is, th is that right? Yes. Or? You know, we started actually in Paris at the Opera House in those days, and uh, in the Châtelet. And, and in the Châtelet we did Richard Strauss, the Frau in the yeah. What, what was your impression then, especially thinking about the difference between the orchestra you found then, in 1994 in Paris, from the one that you conducted in 73, and also from the one that, that you and the world knows from, from those records with Klemperer and Adi Karian and everyone else going back into the, in the 50s and 60s? Was it the same You know, orchestra? I of course knew some of the recordings Klemperer did. I knew Klemperer himself, I knew Karian himself, I knew some of the recordings. I, I know Muti, and uh, he was another great chef for the orchestra, you know. Everybody who's dealing with orchestra music has to know and know Philharmonia. But to experience, to work with them is a special thing, because it's a real wonderful, wonderful group of people who keep their individual uh, approach to music making and everyone adds to something which is very unusual. It's not a collective sound, you know. It is some, it's a sound which is put together by great individual musicians and wonderful, wonderful human beings. I did a lot of Beethoven with them. I did, of course, even Bruckner and things like that, Mahler anyway. But um, the orchestra has a sense for style you know, by having had uh, great conductors, you know, as um, until I came, actually there were already three really very wonderful conductors working with this orchestra. You mean Muti Glamper Carrier? Yes, absolutely, you know. But how e easy it was it, is it with this orchestra to achieve what you want to achieve musically, to get them to, to make the sound that, 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 that you imagine or the things you want to achieve in Beethoven, in Bruckner, in Burpus or whatever it is? Well, these people are uh, extremely sensitive, extremely sensitive. So, but not sensitive in the sense of some Central European orchestra, in the sense they are not offended if you say you don't like something, you know. I mean, um, if you convince them, if, if they are convinced, they are very flexible. And you can get with this orchestra, of course, if you would like it, you can get a very harsh Wagner playing or a very harsh Bruckner playing, but you also can tell them, listen, the f one of the first reviews about Bruckner was that we found a new Schubert. And then if you tell them this, which I did once, you know, once I did Bruckner, and uh, I said, you know, that one of the first reviews about Bruckner for us, we have discovered a new Schubert, then suddenly it sounds different. Yeah, so bec because they know where, where I want this Bruckner sound, in which direction I want this to go. You see. So this is a flexible, intelligent orchestra, and an orchestra which has to work amazingly uh, hard, mm. amazingly hard. As, uh, I think I have, in my limited brain, I have an imagination how it should sound, and I'm pretty picky. <laughs> 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 How does that? Um, were there were there moments where that pickiness was? Uh, you you felt you had to be too picky with them, or maybe you sense from the orchestra that you can push them so far, but you can, there is a, there is a limit after all. Or oh yeah, yeah. You know, for me, there's a problem. You know, with um, because I'm, for instance, 
you can play a wrong note. I know the next time they won't play a wrong note because they know this is wrong. So I don't scream F sharp if somebody plays by accident F, you know, I don't care, you see. But I'm very sensitive about intonation. And I think music starts after uh, as, as close to perfect intonation as possible. And that's why I work a little bit too much sometimes. I always apologize for that, you see, in advance, you <laughs> see. And, but um, these musicians don't need it so much because if you tell them, listen, it doesn't fit and I have the feeling the second line it should be a little bit sharper or lower, uh, they will uh, just right away. The main goal of a conductor should be that he is not important anymore. <laughs> you know, that's the most. Uh, the, if you write, if you are close to that, that the orchestra listens to each other. You know, that the orchestra has a certain spirit which you try to con convey to them. You know, while you are rehearsing, and if you are too important at night, then something is wrong. You see, the orchestra should really try to take over and then it's kind of a dialogue and sometimes it works at night very well you see but um, I think uh, the, this orchestra is able to, to produce a, a very special sound after, after good rehearsals and you become not this organizing guy in front you know so you just uh, deal with different things than uh, bar lines and rhythm and uh, intonation this is actually something which you can work on as far as it's possible and necessary. But uh, the real music starts after this. So um, actually the real importance of a conductor uh, is mainly to find a convincing way of, pro uh, of leading people into a certain sound, in a certain style and a it's a, it's, it's a matter of personality, it's a matter of opinion about music, it's a matter of uh, standing for something, and it's a matter of also doing things which might not convince the public or the critics right away, and uh, you are actually convinced of, of something and you try the orchestra to be convinced with you. And that's, the, that's more important than everything which has to be fixed during rehearsal. Do you listen back to your recordings with, with this orchestra particularly? As little as possible. Uh, what you remember of a concert is sometimes much stronger in, in, your, in your imagination and so on. That usually, uh, I, I'm pretty precise. I know what, what, I, uh, what I like to hear and I know what I heard and most of the time uh, there is, I mean, it, it happens that this is really uh, matching, you know, and then it's a wonderful, uh, so I know, for instance, the last seventh Beethoven I did here. With uh, the Philharmonia? Uh, yeah, yeah, with the Philharmonia. I was very happy about that, you know, I liked that very much. Was, I think it was a wonderful performance and I felt, they felt it was great and so on, but I wouldn't listen to it anymore. Maybe, maybe. You know, once I would live another year, I would listen to that, you know. <laughs> are, are there concerts like that where you remember that coming together? Cause oh yes, sure. I mean, that, I did many concerts with mm, him where sure. I was really absolutely happy, you know. Mm. Absolutely happy and some great solo playing and some great ensemble. And, you know, if you see them also, how they enjoy it from time to time, you know. So it's, no, it's, a, it's wonderful. I think one should never uh, consider even the possibility of uh, saying or meaning that you do these things right. You know that you, you know, there's a German expression. We say, "Das haben wir drauf." We just know it. You know. Um, 
I think there are orchestras which would say, Nein, Beethoven, we know that. Beethoven worked 20 years on these pieces. And how can anybody who studied it, maybe for six weeks, conduct this without blushing? <laughs> you know? This is the thing. And doing these pieces again means for me um, actually getting closer. That's all it means. You know? But I would, not, I would not, never say, okay, that's, the, that's now the, the solution. You know, it's an approach to the piece, it is always different. And the orchestras, which I, I was about 20 years with Cleveland, you see, and it, every time I repeated things, I said, but uh, last time we did, I said, let's forget about it, you know? This time we do it this way. So otherwise I wouldn't do the profession, it would be boring, you know? Deadly boring. D did you feel, do you feel you, you can get closer, though? In in the sense that you know the 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 experience, the decades of experience the decades of the, of the relationship with an orchestra must mean that you're able to, as you say, it's not ever a question of getting everything there in, in that way, but but then in a way you know you can be more efficient or the thing can can get closer ideally. You know, um, I'm not a musicologist, but I have to say, uh, in the last six weeks. I worked a lot on the autograph of the Ninth Symphony, Beethoven, for instance. And I mean, it's, I have so much respect of these people who make some sense out of what he wrote down there. I mean, it's almost you can read it, you know. I mean, it takes uh, amazing effort even to read it, you know. So these people are great. And they found very important things. People in Fort Wengler's days, for instance, did not realize that the beginning of the Schubert C major is a la breve. Yeah. So he would, he would just uh, start, I mean, in, in almost half of the tempo. Still, these recording listeners, you know, of course, in knowing Fort Wengler, which I still listened uh, to his rehearsals, you know, after the war, um, would say, how can you do it so fast? But if if people would have known the concept of this piece and, and look at the structure, of, for instance, the, what the basses do shortly before we come to the Allegro part in the first movement and so on, they would uh, be very convinced that it is right to do it almost twice as fast at the beginning. But if you do, of course, in early theory, ti ta ti ta ta ti you know, yeah. And uh, it is actually almost twice as fast, because uh, one can prove it. And so that takes time to convince people, takes time to convince some of the orchestras. And if I did it, and I did that, you know, I di even recorded this piece wrong, you know, because I didn't know it either. Mm -hmm. You see that there's a, there's a really written a la breve. And when I talked to Muti about it, he said, no. I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, see? So that's actually the way it is. So it's a process of discovery that keeps going on. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a reason you're an honorary conductor for life. Uh, Christoph von Dochnani, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so.